What's up guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm bringing to you guys another boot video because this season is kind of boot season and it's perfect for the weather. So some of you may know and some of you may not know about Doc Martens and these are basically a classic black boot. I wanted to make this video because it's a little bit more complicated than the bean boots because the if you shop for these type of boots they make LL Bean boots a lot easier they look a lot easier to purchase and to figure out but um, it's a little trickier when it comes to Doc Martens but a little background about the Doc Martens is that they are a German brand um, they come in full sizes only just like the bean boots when you do decide to order these boots there is a slight difference because there are European sizes and US sizes so definitely be wary of that when you are shopping for them online for me, when I went to go purchase my boots, uh, I actually went to my mall and we had a Journeys. Journeys carries it, so definitely if you guys have a Journeys in your mall or any Journeys outlet, check them out because then you can actually physically try them on in stores versus trying to figure out online because it makes it slightly complicated because I know some websites are autom automatically set on UK sizes, so watch out for that. Um, since they are full sizes only, definitely, definitely try to try these on in stores because like my bean boots, I am a size 8, but I had to downsize. So for me, in stores, I actually tried on both size 7, 8, and 7 in US sizes. Uh, the boots I ended up getting were size 7. It tells you in the inside for you guys to reference. If you guys are full, like, exact 8 sizes like me. So um, it tells you it's US size 7, and then up here it says UK size 5. So, um... If, if you guys are my size, um, definitely you can go for a UK 5 if you want. But when I tried the 8 in stores, it was a really big difference. Like, it, I felt like I was wearing, like, my dad's shoes. Like, there's so much room in the front. And um, even when I tightened it on to, like, lace it on and walk it around in the store, it was still a big noticeable difference versus the size 7, which is the ones I got. Um... They were a lot tighter, but it was too perfect of a fit. So I was kind of torn between my toes kind of bumping at the the front versus, you know, this far apart from the front. So I ended up choosing the size 7. Um, I've owned these shoes probably for about, I, say, I would say a good year now, but I've only worn them out for probably like a good six times. And um, I would... I think it would be safe to say that these are not yet broken in. So the difference is, um, if you guys can tell, it's kind of shiny and it's definitely hard. So the difference between whatever boots you guys choose, because Doc Martens sells a wide range of boots and different styles, this boot that I have here is the Women's Dr. Martens 1460 8 eye boot. So 8 eye boot meaning by these little ringlet holes for your shoelaces. Um, this just means that it just goes up higher. They sell ones that kind of go up to all the way to your knees and they even sell some where they're just kind of cut right here, the regular slip-on shoes. So it's really depending on what you choose but that is what I have if you guys are interested in this one. As you can see it's shiny and it's hard leather so the two differences in the two types of boots that you could get at Doc Martens is one you could get a corrected leather which is what I have here so what this means is that this type of leather was corrected in a way to give it this smooth texture however that means that it will be more stiffer and more difficult to break in so definitely have that in mind if your feet is more sensitive and you're not sure if you're able to keep breaking them in or wearing them around constantly now the second type of leather is the uncorrected and that just means that it'll be much more easy to break in. However, the look, the build of the shoe won't be as it won't it won't have this look because I know Journeys carried this one and then they had a second one where it was kind of like slumped down. Like you know how you wear old shoes and it kind of like wears and tears. It it had that look. So I didn't really want that and I wanted form. The other one kind of was just like sinking in. It just looked worn already, but that's that's the one that you would want to get if you're worried that you won't be able to break it in because that one will be a lot softer. It'll be a lot easier to wear and it won't hurt you like this one might because this one has some issues. So if you're interested in getting um, uncorrected leather boots from Doc Martens, definitely look for the shoe names that come with Greasy, Nappa, and Grizzly. 
Those are the more softer ones. Like I said, much more easier to break in compared to the corrected leather ones, which I'm, I'm not sure because I'm kind of new to Doc Martens as well. These are my first pairs, so I'm kind of getting used to it, but I just wanted to let you guys know before you buy these since it is a lot more difficult. But I do want to say one thing in mind, whether it's corrected or uncorrected leather, some people don't need to break them in. Like I've before I bought these, a couple of my friends actually owned Doc Martens and they were telling me, yeah, they're heavy, they they tore up my ankles, the chafing was really bad, and they blistered up. But when I wear these, um, I don't necessarily wear them all day long. I probably wear them for a good eight hours, which is a good bit half of the day. Um, I never really had any trouble with blistering or chafing because uh, I'm not sure if this helps, but I actually stop my laces at the third hole from the top and I actually don't lace it all the way. It's still tight, so unlike the bean boots where I wear them loose or tight, which it didn't matter, they were still going to be big, those didn't chafe me at all. These, I actually have to lace them pretty tight, so um, the the fit towards the ankle and the bottom of your shin, it might be difficult if you have thicker ankles, I would say. I'm not sure how to describe it, but this fits onto my ankles pretty tight, so which I will show you guys in the end. But, um, I do wear these fitted, but not all the way to the top eyelet, if that makes sense. So um, uh, this gives me the room to, every time I slip on, because people say this part gives you ch chafing, um, I always leave these untied. I'm trying to explain this in a really easy way, but I'm not sure. But um, every time I slip these on, I always pull this back to give it like a bend to keep, you know, just breaking in the leather to give it a mold so that it could move with me when I do wear them instead of just jabbing into my ankle so definitely if you guys choose to get these i would start off by lacing them like this and then eventually you can bring them up you don't even have to start at the third eyelet you can start somewhere towards the bottom and whatever's easy for you because there's no right or wrong way to wear doc martens they're fitted either way so um definitely keep that in mind now if you do choose to go with the corrected leather which is a majority of doc martin shoes which are harder to break in um, there are two philosophies that you can go by to break in your shoes. You can either, one, you can get it over as soon as possible, so just wear them constantly, go through the pain, hope you can get it over with. Um, it's going to be a little hard, it's going to take some time, definitely, but you could just keep wearing it back to back to back. Like, it's, the, it's just like second skin. Or you could do it the second way of breaking in your shoe, which is like me, um, definitely doing it slower, wearing it day by day, don't push yourself. If you try to wear these out in public, definitely. Um, if you're worried that it's going to start chafing, always bring a second pair of shoes. But um, I would definitely plan to wear them for days that I know I won't have them on as long. But um, I've worn them hiking, which is kind of funny. It's not really extraneous hiking, but it was a good a bit of walking. And it didn't start bothering me a little until probably the six hour mark of the day, not of the hiking, because I didn't hike that long, but just wearing around in general and walking, it starts to kind of dig through socks, so. And um, also another tip, if you guys are breaking them in, whether you're doing it fast or slow, definitely bring um, or wear the same length or just a little bit higher length of socks so that it will protect your skin from definitely this part right up here, which is the trouble areas. This is the trouble areas, and then so for some, some people, this is the other trouble area right here. But um, it really depends on everyone's foot since everyone's foot is different. Now, if you guys are wondering if you're in the more snowy regions or colder regions up north, um, Doc Martens are slip resistant, but I think it's only for like restaurants. Like, well, I'm not saying for restaurants, but like just for example, like the wet areas, not necessarily ice or snow because <laughs> you may slip inside a little just in these because my bean boots kind of do the same since those are rubber based these are rubber based as well but if you're just wondering in general they are slip resistant just for normal watery areas not necessarily icy hardcore regions um just by judging how long i've had these and just the feel of the material these will definitely be long lasting just as the bean boots um they are made really well and i believe they're hand handmade as well i'm not sure i'm pretty sure they are but they're really crafted very well um it still actually feels brand new even after wearing them so 
well not that many times because I only wore them a couple times since owning them but but since we're on the topic of the leather and how it's long durability um, definitely keep in mind that since leather is corrected to go in this type of texture not every leather boot will be the same so um, this one may be a bit more tougher than the next, I'm not sure, but each leather varies from shoe to shoe. Not every shoe is going to be the same exact. That's why I try to stress the importance of trying it in a physical store because I don't want you guys to go through the hassle of having to return your boots, you know, bring some back in, and then it just gets frustrating and you waste a lot of money that you wouldn't really have to spend if you went to a physical store. However, price-wise, I did purchase these boots from Journeys, my local mall store, for uh, $151.19, and that's with tax and everything. Um, I think these are really a good investment. They really, they look so good. Um, when you step out on these, because I remember when I wasn't wearing one of my boots to school when I was on campus, um, I saw one of the girls wearing them, and I was like, wow, that stands out. Like, you just look directly at them. You know, they're such a statement piece. Um, I actually love, it's so simple with this soft shine, and um, this, I, this is like their actual original stitches, which pops at the bottom and I know it doesn't look that high but it's like a half an inch maybe an inch from the boots and it gives you a short lift so you go like a couple inches and it makes you a little bit taller and I actually like how since this does taper in at your ankles and the head of the boot is kind of round it it gives this illusion that your legs are a lot longer than they are and it it works all around and these are really versatile with any type of outfits. I'll probably make an outfit video for you guys, but I posted some outfits with my docs on um, my IG. So if you guys want to check that out or get any inspiration, because I know if you guys are like me, I definitely want to know, am I able to match? Are these boots able to work with different types of styles that I have before even investing in these type of expensive boots? But I think it definitely pays off. Um, they have this classic staple little tag back here. Um, it says... What does it say? It says airwear, I believe, with bouncing soles. So it's supposed to, the bouncing soles are supposed to actually make it comfier for you, which it will, but um, definitely people have always talked about, if you guys decide to research Doc Martens, people always talk about how they've had their, their Doc Martens since the 1990s, and you know, it's been, they go way back. They have such strong, thick history that it's definitely something to look up and, um, Something to have, really, in your closet. that concludes this video I really hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something hopefully you're interested in Doc Martens or you already have some if I left something out and I figured that out after this video is posted I'll definitely leave it down below to help you guys out if you guys are experienced with Doc Martens definitely throw a few pointers down below I'll learn something we'll learn something let's learn together let's help each other out save each other money but I'll catch you guys in the next video the